All right, so I was a little bit skeptical about getting a pair of these because honestly, I, I don't see the luster and the love that people um, have for a pair of footwear like this. Like I understand other footwear that people love, but not this one, I, I don't know, I'm being too judgy. So in this video, I have a pair of Birkenstocks and this is a uh, classic, classic, timeless model known to many as the Arizona. And you can see it's everything that I hoped and dreamed for a Jesus sandal to be. <laughs> All jokes aside though, I wanted to try these out because I know a lot of people love their Birkenstocks. It's not anything new. It's been something since I was in high school even. I remember, and I already mentioned this in a previous video, but my high school girlfriend had Birkenstocks and actually wore her Birkenstocks every now and then. And I was like, these are surprisingly comfortable. But of course, hers were like super broken in and she had like this little neat, like a little bead that she put on hers that had like a little uh, like glass blown bead. Because her mom's friends made like personalized glass blown beads and stuff. And so she had one. Anyway, it was it was actually pretty cool. And I thought they were kind of uh, comfortable. I was like, oh, that's cool. But I never thought I would ever own my own pair. And until this day, I, I literally haven't. But I recently did a video on the Reebok Beatnik and I was suggesting that maybe that was somewhat similar to a pair of Birkenstocks because I imagine they felt somewhat similar because they had a very firm base on the bottom of the foot. Uh, but I wanted to get my own pair of Birkenstocks to confirm that. Also, I did a video with, with my friend Lena. We went back and forth on our top favorite sneakers and stuff and footwear and Birkenstocks were one of her favorites. Uh, and every time she comes over to the house, she stays here and, and hangs out with the kids and stuff. Um, she always has her Burks with her as well as her Vans. But anyways, I got a pair of Burks for this video. Uh, shout out to Hibbit Sports for sending this one over and sponsoring this video. Uh, they're a long-term sponsor of this channel and really helps support uh, my channel and the content that I bring them. And uh, I'm much appreciated for them to sponsor it. Let's go ahead and get into the Birkenstock, the mighty Birkenstock. So this is the Birkenstock Arizona a mocha colorway, kind of the traditional one that everybody wears, it seems like. But this is the Berkey Buck, not Birkin Bag. That, that would be way more expensive. Berkey Buck, if that's how you say it properly, is their version of New Buck. It's a synthetic suede upper or New Buck upper or whatever uh, on here. So it is not real leather on this. However, they do have pairs that do have real leather, uh, but this is the version that I got that has the synthetic. And it is $110 for these. So why are these so coveted? on many people's feet. What's the big deal with Birkenstock sandals? Everybody says they're so comfortable, they're so comfortable. And, and then I put these on and I'm like, bruh, the midfoot right here is just a midfoot killer. And I have kind of flat feet, but this has a big bulbous arc in the middle of the foot. So I'm just like, nah, I, really comfortable? I don't really remember this is the way it felt like when I was wearing my, uh, my ex's shoes. That is because these are not made to be comfortable straight out the box. So this is actually an old technology that they've kept around for years. In fact, Birkenstock actually came around in 1774, supposedly. Johann Adam Birkenstock was listed as the subject and cobbler uh, in the church that he lived in in Germany. And that was a long, long time ago. Then fast forward to 1896 and the master cobbler Conrad Birkenstock began manufacturing and selling flexible footbed insoles. And then in 1925, the blue footbed is among the products manufactured at a newly opened facility in Friedberg, Germany. And it was the very first footbed like kind of created. And then in 1932, Carl launched a Birkenstock training course and the Carl Birkenstock system. And it is endorsed by leading physician and podiatrist. Who's to say that they weren't paid off in 1930s? I mean, come on. But Birkenstocks were not introduced in the US market until 1966. So what makes the shoes so special, you ask? Well, let me tell you about the footbed that they have in here. At the heart of every Birkenstock design is a legendary footbed. The details are all in the design. Each element of the footbed serves a purpose to encourage proper foot well-being and health. The result is a signature style coupled with all-day comfort. It has a deep heel cup that cradles the heel and keeps your natural cushioning right under your heel bone. The longitudinal arc support runs along the sides of the footbed, providing stability with each step. The transverse arc support runs through the middle of the footbed, helping ensure proper alignment and a solid stance. They have a raised toe bar that encourages natural gripping motion to your feet, exercises the leg and stimulates circulation. And a roomy toe box allows toes to move more naturally, promoting better balance and correct foot alignment. Now that's one of the interesting things about Birkenstock is the sizing of the shoe makes a big difference when you're wearing them. If you don't get the right size, it's not gonna be a very good experience on your feet. And guess what? Ding, ding, ding. I got a size that's a little bit too big for my feet. So this is a 43, probably need a 42 because this is a little bit longer than what I need. I also believe the box has it checked off as the narrow fit and I need a regular fit because obviously I don't have a narrow foot, I have a wider foot. So too narrow, too long for my foot. 
Part of the reason why I'm not gonna be able to give these a proper take and really get that uh, Birkenstock comfort out of the shoe, but I can understand why people uh, gravitate towards the model. In fact, my wife actually has multiple pairs of Birkenstocks uh, and she wears them on a regular basis all the time and probably because it continues to get more and more comfortable year over year. Now there's some similarities between this and this, which is kind of funny, but it's actually true. Like the footbed of the Birkenstock actually molds to your foot over time. After you wear it enough, it breaks down and breaks in and it kind of molds to your foot, they say. The Nike Foam Posit ones actually mold to your foot when you wear these more, uh, which is why normally when people get these originally, they're just like, nah, they're too snug, they're too uncomfortable, but they were really made to play ball. And when you play in these on a regular basis, they mold to your foot and they become much more comfortable. So how is it that they mold to your foot? Because it looks like it's just like, a cork footbed so it morphs because it has a cork and latex footbed and again over time after you wear it and break it in it will mold to your feet now i wanted to throw these in the microwave to have it mold in your feet but then i remember it had metal uh, buckles and <laughs> that would have been bad i want to throw these in the oven and see if i can do that though and just soften them up a little bit and then try to wear them and see if it molds a little bit just kind of cheat them i'll let you guys know if that actually happens what the structure of the midsole says it has the first layer is jute, and it is the layer of jute that forms the foundation of the footbed. It stabilizes the natural cork and latex. The second layer is cork and latex. The cork and latex footbed is the heart of all Birkenstock shoes. They have a second layer of jute, which is placed around the sides of the footbed, and then it does have a suede lining. That is the four layers of the midsole. And, but it's crazy to me, we're here in 2022 talking about a technology that was created back in like the 1800s. It's pretty wild, but tried and true is something that I think people really enjoy and appreciate. And although I haven't had a chance to enjoy mine because mine is extremely firm and not really good on feet and I'm not gonna be able to, to break them in the way that I properly need to, um, I do respect what they've created. And I think it's a pretty awesome uh, thing. And obviously there's other people out there that absolutely love their, their Burks. I can see why this one's known as the Arizona though, because you could wear this one literally year round in Arizona because of the weather. Obviously it makes perfect sense. Uh, Birkenstocks for me, when I was in tech, in the IT industry, uh, the developers would always rock Birkenstocks. It was just always the funnest thing. They would always uh, be wearing these in the, to work. The one thing I wanted to mention though, is that I always hear a lot of people that love Burks talk about the durability. It's so durable, it's so comfortable and this and that. But the one thing that I question is like, then why does Birkenstock use the EVA foam on the outsole? Why don't they do a rubber compound? If they did rubber, I think it would last longer. The EVA foam outsole is the one thing that Burke owners say wears down really that's like the only thing that really wears down. It wears down to the cork of the shoe and then you're kind of done for once the midsole is done. And so a lot of people end up redoing the outsoles of the Birkenstocks and then you can just get them redone over and over and over again. And then you'll have your form fitted uh, footbed and you can just keep rocking like that. And it's kind of neat that people actually will go to somebody to actually work and fix up your Birkenstocks, but it doesn't seem like a very 2022 sort of thing to do. It feels like those places are probably far and few between where they should be. And honestly, it might be a calling for Birkenstock to redo the outsole and make it like rubber or something that maybe lasts longer. But of course, I don't know if that's something they're interested in doing. Uh, all in all though, what do you guys think about Birkenstocks? Is it something you guys find comfortable or not? Drop a comment in the comment section. Yes or no, uh, or maybe so. I did that on Twitter and a lot of people said um, yes and no and maybe so. So I feel like it's definitely a product that you have to wear in. There's no if, ands, and buts or cheats around it, but it does sound like if you do so, the reward is very comfortable footwear. And I think that that is kind of fun. It's kind of fun to be able to, to see and hear. And I appreciate Hibbit for sending this pair over. If you guys want to go shop at Hibbit, in the description of the video, feel free to do so. They have a great online release calendar as, as well as a bunch of other products, especially for back to school for you guys looking for your kids. They sent over some backpacks for my kids as well. Super fun. The kids were super excited to have some new backpacks coming into the school year, which I can't believe is already summer, end of uh, summer coming up here. But um, but anyway, that's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good rest of the day. Uh, leave a comment again. Let me know what you guys think about Burks, and uh, we'll leave it at that. Hopefully we'll see you guys back on the channel uh, very soon, and I uh, appreciate y'all. Have a good one. Peace.